morning everybody we're starting a little bit later than usual today because we have an overnight into Ontario and they only want me to be there at 3 p.m. to pick up the load in Winnipeg so it's gonna be a night driving kind of day I only got six hours to drive into Ontario we're going to Barwick Ontario which is around you know the Fort Francis area so just on the other side of the lakes or uh, no, I guess just on the other side of the border from northern Minnesota I believe we can look more into it a little later we're gonna be in Big Blue 42 I'm on my way to get her all started up right now and get ready to go chaos got everything I need it may look like a lot but once I get it all packed away in there I actually didn't bring along that much it's just one night I brought along a change of clothes and uh, some food which reminds me I want to make sure the fridge is on because I'm gonna put the uh, my food in the fridge because I brought a lunch along for tomorrow as well but for now my load is ready in Winnipeg let's go pick it up guess I may as well put away a few things just to get them out of the way they're not falling all over the place while I'm on my way there get everything out of the way I can't stand living in mess though I end up living in my own mess quite a bit but it's different when it's my mess my mess I know where everything is it may look messy to you it's organized to me all right let's uh, hold my bedding sheets Don't worry about that later hard hat take this along just in case we need it I don't think I will but you never know you always got to be prepared my lunch kit with two days worth of lunches and I put this in the little fridge here this fridge here is uh, pretty neat. <laughs> Just a drawer. I'm not sure if there used to be shelves in here or not, but I mean, just uh, that one I want for today. So I've got two sandwiches in there. I'm put, actually, yeah, I wanted to put these pears in there, but I don't want them rolling around and getting all bruised. Oh boy, this is a dilemma. Maybe I should put my whole lunch kit in there. Yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. I'll figure this out. We got we got to get going. I can't waste too much time on this. Got my trailer behind me now, and I'm at the Petro Pass at Deacon's Corner on the east side of Winnipeg. Oh, but are you gonna keep going or what's going on here? Okay, you're gonna keep going. This is the second truck stop that I've been to that has issues at the pumps. That pump over there wasn't working. They need to put a cone or a garbage can in front of it or something. I got nothing to put in there right now. I'm I guess the next guy's gonna figure out the same way I did. The guy in front of me tried and I was in line behind him. I went in behind him. I found out, so now I had to come around and get in line again. And I think this guy's gonna be done first, but he's having a hard time at the card lock there. Are you gonna start fueling now? Okay, looks like they got it. I gotta wait for them to fuel up. Then I can fuel up. The place I'm going to near Barwick, Ontario is very remote. Not the most remote, but it's very remote. And there's not going to be any services or anything there when I get there. So I have to make sure that I have food for breakfast in the morning, uh, maybe a little snack before bed today if I want to, maybe a, bit, a little bit of extra water. We're going to stop at a truck stop down the road. Or maybe I can even run in here and get it. I'll probably do that. I, don't know. I was thinking of stopping down the road at Shell. But why do that when I'm already here? But the reason I came here is because uh, I need fuel just to make sure that everything's topped up. You know, don't want to take any chances uh, when, when we're out there in the remote wilderness of Northern Ontario. Should be pretty good weather. Uh, it was plus six here all day today. It was very warm. Uh, at least we're not dealing with minus 30, minus 40 degree temperature. So once I'm done fueling, I'll run in to the store there. I'm just gonna grab something just to put in the, in the fridge. Like I brought a lunch for tomorrow. I guess I could use that as breakfast too. I just want to make sure I have enough food just in case if I get stuck out there for a day or so or something. You want to be prepared. You don't want to run out of food or water. And then that'll be that. So where we're going in Warwick, I'm just going to see if I can get directions. 402 kilometers or four hours and 17 minutes according to Google. 400 kilometers, if I go into the calculatory device, 402 divided by 1.61, we're looking at about 250 miles, not far at all. But the time's already quarter after four, so I'll get there late tonight, 
Uh, they told me where I could park for a night. Park there, go to sleep, wake up, 8 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, I gotta help them unload this yet. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to tailgate the product, which means I gotta carry the product. It's all on the floor, it's not on pallets. I'm gonna have to carry it to the back where they can grab it. And hey, at least we're, uh, at least we're not pulling one of these pikes, eh? That would be tight going into Northern Ontario with those. I don't think they're allowed to go into Ontario though. Not through Northern Ontario. You see them like once you get down to the Southern part of Ontario between like uh, Toronto and Montreal, you see them down there on the 401, but they're restricted on what roads they can go on and when, just because they're so, look at them. You don't want to end up on city streets with a unit like this, right? You gotta make sure you know where you're going and that's why they got regulations and laws for them. Getting ourselves back on the road. Got ourselves some snacks. Got just a couple of muffins. Just to tide me over in the morning just to put something in my stomach. There it goes. We didn't even get A&W today. I've gotten enough A&W this month. I think I need to take a break from that. But here we go, finally hitting the highway. Who needs the sun? I'll drive in the night. We'll own the night. But five hours ahead. What's the time now? 4.30ish? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9.30ish we should be there. That's what I'm thinking. I'll have almost, uh, I'll have 10 and a half hours. And here in Canada, I only need eight hours consecutive off before I can start my next day. And for today, I still have 12 hours and 12 minutes available to me to drive. So I think we'll make it. I looked at the weather forecast, not supposed to get any snow. It's supposed to be a clear day, clear night and clear day tomorrow. The day after tomorrow, they're expecting some snow though. I don't know how much you can see. We're going through Sioux Narrows in Ontario. Small little town here. Highway 71, I believe, is what we're on. I forgot to bring Karen along. Maybe that's why I've been so happy. I don't know. I could always just look at my GPS and it would tell me exactly what road I was on at any time. But I think it's 71. This is Trans Canada. It goes down, uh, like I said, Fort Francis, I believe, right? That's where the, the border is to cross into the US. Man, that compression brake's got a lot of pull. <laughs> got a lot of compression nice little town in here I miss this I miss seeing these little towns all these little towns that you would never even hear of you'd never even know existed but because you're a truck driver you're a paid tourist you get to come and see it so yeah I've got about another hour or so to go I told them I'd be there around 10 o'clock I think I'm actually gonna be there closer to 8 30 or 9 so that's good I'd rather be early than late this truck literally does all the work for you. It's got 13 speed automatic transmission. Just set the cruise and just keep her between the lines. Watch for deer, watch for moose. I can tell this truck has a little bit of the same problem that that Peterbilt had that I drove, 3101. My friend is actually driving that right now, Mike. He started here uh, recently. I used to work with him years ago at Pepsi. And now he's working here with me. He's a great guy. And he's driving 3101. That was my old truck that I, uh, that I used to drive. Loved that thing. But the problem with that one was the transmission. The transmission uh, <laughs> would bog down a lot. Very often I would just put it in manual and just shift through the gears myself. It's just a push button shift then. Oops. See here we're bogging ourselves down just a little bit. It doesn't quite know that it should be in 12th, but it wants to stay in 13th. But man, that's such a small criticism. This truck is still a condo on wheels, just gliding along like I'm just floating on a cloud. Right, we're going down this little back road. This is Ontario Highway 600. It's more like a little bush road or back road, but Highway 600. 
Got to go around the corner and there should be someone waiting for me where they're uh, going to tell me where I can park for night. And they said I'm going to have a hot breakfast with them in the morning, so bonus. Nice people. And here we go, everybody. Got about 10 hours now till I need to be awake. So I've got my bed all made up here. Got my office set up. Thanks for watching today. We'll see you tomorrow. There'll be much more scenery tomorrow as uh, we'll be going through all of Northern, on well, through parts of Northern Ontario. We've got the curtains pulled. It's time for bed. It's gonna be a comfortable sleep, that's for sure. This truck reminds me so much of that last Peterbilt I was in, 3101 I was talking about before. It's so similar. They use the same lights. Oh, you can't really see it from here. Everything, the gauges are like the Kenworth classic gauges and stuff, but the shifter for the transmission is exactly the same as Peterbilt. Like The trucks are practically the same. They're the same company as far as I know, same, same owners. So Peterbilt and Kenworth are you know, you think you're going to one or the other, you're really just going to the same one. The money goes to the same place, I think. Uh, they're very, very close. It's just this truck has more space than that Peterbilt, if that's possible. Though I don't think it's quite as deep of a sleeper now that I'm in here and thinking about it. It's just, it has a bit of a different design. Still really like it. And I did see all your comments from last weekend when we took this truck out. And uh, a lot of you were saying that the freight liners are wider in the cab area there. Yeah, that's probably true. A little more space between the seats and stuff. I kind of like it when it's a little narrower in the cab though, gives it more of a, a truck feel. I don't want to feel like I'm driving a minivan. So this feels like, for a big condo unit, this feels like a truck still, in my mind. I mean, that's all subjective. It depends what a truck feels like to you. It. Uh, it's different for everybody, I guess, but it's really neat. You know, I'm, it doesn't matter what truck I'm driving. It's Volvo's, Peterbilt's, Western Star, Kenworth, Freightliner, Mack. Those are the main brands that are out here in North America. I hear a lot of a lot from you guys in Europe there. I understand Scania is a pretty good brand. Uh, DAF, Man, the Man Truck. They have a truck in in Europe. It's called the it's called M A N Man. I wonder how long it's gonna be until they have to change that. Or maybe they'll just make a another truck. The woman, or just the woo man, man truck. I don't know. I'm trying to be funny. It's not working because I'm too tired to follow through with it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go to bed right away here. Just finished up. Uh, a little bit of computer work and stuff. I still got like nine hours till I have to be awake. That'll be plenty of time. I'll be asleep as soon as my head hits the pillow here. And the mattress is pretty comfortable. All in all, it's a good truck, but you know, like I've said before, whatever truck they want to put me